All right, today we're going to take a look at the Conair 1875 hairdryer. We're going to look at the different systems and functions inside of it, how it was made, and how it works. And we're also going to take a look at how they were able to produce a hairdryer for less than $8 and still make a profit, still stay in business as a company, because that's a very low price. Um, and the way they've done that is they've reduced a lot of cost and complexity, and we'll take a look at how they've done that. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the plug here. This is called a ground fault interrupter circuit plug, and it has two different sized uh, prongs right here. There's a, there's a larger prong and a smaller prong, and that's very important. The larger prong is the neutral prong, and that means you can't plug this uh, plug in incorrectly. It has to go in in only one way and that means that the power uh, is grounded properly so the power always goes to ground and that's a, that's a critical thing in a, in a circuit like this. And so what this plug does is it's uh, it's actually pretty smart. It can, it can tell if there's a power difference between these two prongs and that power difference might occur when the hair dryer was say dropped in water or there was some sort of short that happened. Inside the hair dryer there are open electrical contacts that if they they're con uh, put in into water or some other conductive fluid. They will uh, short out, and it'll cause the you know it'll electrify the fluid. And, and in the past, that was a, a huge problem because people would get shocked or electrocuted. And, and now it's not as big a deal because uh, we have these ground fault interrupter circuits. Uh, so let's take a look at what's inside of that. And I'm gonna, I've already pop this apart to some degree. I'm going to see if I can't get it the rest of the way here. Now, uh, I want to say one thing really quick here. From a safety standpoint, it is absolutely critical that you don't take apart any plugs ever without a professional. And if you if you do have a professional and you do end up taking apart a plug like this, make sure that you never ever plug it in. It's totally unsafe. So, uh, this is a plastic molded housing. It was injection molded. There was uh, two pieces of steel that came together and they they uh, the molten plastic was injected and you can see there are little pin marks right here and uh, pins came in inside the mold and pushed this part out and then there's a little plastic piece here with a spring and that's for the test uh, switch so the test switch pushes on this part right here on the printed circuit board and the reset switch is right here so you push on the reset switch and it will reset it so if it gets triggered you can still use your hair dryer again later so uh, one thing I want to take a look at here is the uh, printed circuit board here. So we've got a lot of really cool things happening on this printed circuit board. It is made out of fiberglass. It's got a thin layer of copper applied to it. And then on top of the copper is, is a layer of lacquer. The, the copper, before they put the lacquer layer down, they actually etch away parts of the copper. So there's places where there is no copper, and there's places where there is. And those places where the copper exists are called traces, and they function like little tiny wires. They're super flat and compact, and allow you to get a lot of stuff in a very small space, which is why uh, we use a little printed circuit board like this. And you can see on here, we've got a little tiny capacitor that's called a surface mount capacitor and a little resistor remember a capacitor stores a charge and then releases it and a resistor will resist current flow and that can be used to protect protect uh, different parts of the circuit and this right here is uh, this part right here is called an integrated circuit um, and it actually uh, takes commands from things on the back takes information from things on the back and um, decides what to do with it. So this thing right here is called a toroidal ring or uh, a copper coil and it uh, it basically can sense the the difference between these two lines and so when there's a, a significant voltage difference uh, a few a few milliamps even uh, it, it can tell and it sends information to the integrated circuit here and then the integrated circuit tells this guy which is a uh, it's called a solenoid it's a linear solenoid but it, uh, it sends electricity to this and it causes this pin to pop and when the pin pops the uh, it breaks the circuit the electrical contact uh, con uh, connection in the circuit so there's no chance that you can get shocked there and there's a couple really neat and in interesting uh, parts on this board we've got a, uh, a this is a dielectric capacitor and then we have another capacitor right here and you can see right here this is a uh, ceramic capacitor this little sort of rust colored one. I'll take this out so you can see it better. And this is called a, a uh, transistor so it can function like a, sw a switch in a circuit. And this is called a varistor or a variable resistor. 
and um, it can protect the circuit from high voltages and, and things like that. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, a non-linear resistor. In other words, uh, as the current uh, flow changes, the resistance changes, and so it can protect your circuitry there. And then if you look on the inside, you can see the, uh, the back side of the plugs, or the, or the prongs, I should say, and those are just brass pieces with, uh, with the wires that go to the circuit soldered on. And then this part of the uh, of the switch housing is, or I should say, the plug is also uh, made out of injection molded plastic. And then we have a the wire that comes down here, and there's this protective uh, rubber piece on the wire so that the wire can flex back and forth inside of the housing without wearing out. And if you look right here, here's a warning. It says. Uh, unplug it, do not remove this tag. Uh, they still want to warn you that it's, it's definitely not safe to drop a hair dryer in to water. Uh, and this is a safety precaution, but it's, it's not a good idea to ever put the hair dryer near water because uh, it is an electrical device with, with open contacts on the inside.